Well, the Yankees got with it. They made a trade right away. They, they came into the offseason and said, we need two elite starting pitchers. And the first move, they got one of the elite left-handers in all of the game, and that is James Paxton, formerly of the Seattle Mariners and now a New York Yankee. And he's nice enough to join us here on the K-Show. James, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you guys? We're doing great. So tell me, <clears throat> when did you get the phone call and your absolute first reaction? Uh, I got the phone call yesterday. I think it was about 3 o'clock. It was uh, Jerry DePoto, uh, GM for the Seattle Mariners, gave me a call and uh, kind of told me what was going to be going on. Um, and honestly, I was excited. I, uh, I think I'm very honored to uh, have been chosen by the Yankees to uh, help them go for number 28. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a great experience. Um, obviously, I'm going to miss uh, miss Seattle, but I'm uh, very excited for the opportunity. Now, James, um, did you have a sense that you're on the block? Because we keep hearing rumors that the Mariners are just going to break it down and start all over again. So did you sense that this was coming? Uh, I saw all the rumors, you know, on uh, Twitter and stuff like that and uh, different things. I, I never heard anything official from uh, the team or anything like that, but it sure seemed like something was going to happen. You know, it's a strange situation, James. You come to a team that just won 100 games, and the fan base looks about it looks at it as a disappointment because it's about winning championships with the Yankees. So, do you like fully grasp coming to a team where it's basically all or nothing? Yeah, I mean, it's just the way the Yankees are. You know, they've got a great history, you know, tradition, commitment to winning. They, it's basically championship or bust in New York, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. Now, people will say, I mean, it's unfair to you, but the last big-time starting pitcher, uh, well, the, the Jay Happ worked out, but before that, Sonny Gray, and I said, well, Gray had all the intangibles that you'd want in a player, but he just didn't make it work in New York. So people are saying, well, well James Paxton really hasn't pitched in very big games, not, not a lot of pressure in Seattle. What do you answer to those people that have their doubts? Um... Uh... Everyone's different, mm -hmm. you know. Just wait, just wait and see. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring everything I've got, and uh, you know, I put everything I've got in, into, uh, into this game, and uh, you're gonna get everything I have. Innings? Can are you someone that you feel that can consistently pitch 200 innings a season? I think I'm getting there. You know, I've had my fair share of injuries, that's for sure. Um, luckily, knock on wood, none of them have been uh, to my shoulder or elbow. Nothing structural. Um, and none of the injuries that I've had have returned, you know, so I've learned how to not have those come back. Uh, so hopefully I'm running out of things here to uh, have to remedy and uh, I can, uh, you know, stay healthy for an entire season. You know, I work very hard and I put a lot into this and uh, hold a lot of pride in, in myself and, you know, my game. And uh, I'm just going to I'm going to give everything I've got to go out there and give it, uh, you know, that 200 inning effort. Now, have you spoken, I assume you've spoken with the manager, Aaron Boone, and if so, what did Aaron tell you, and how long was the conversation? It was a pretty short conversation. You know, we talked for about uh, three to five minutes. Um, he was just welcoming me to the Yankees, telling me how excited he was, and uh, I was expressing my excitement as well, and he was letting me know to uh, get in touch with any questions. He also said he'd be reaching out again after Thanksgiving just to uh, have a, a further conversation. When you'd come here as an opponent, did you get a chance to experience New York? Did you like New York? Yeah, I've been a few times. I um, have a few friends in New York, actually. Um, great city. Love the city. Um, you know, super cool stadium. Uh, loved, loved everything about it. It's, uh, it's going to be a great place for me. Now, you know, I'm, I'm reading up on you after the Yankees made the acquisition, and I, I want to ask you this question. So I, I look on Baseball Reference, and you initially, you're from Canada. You got drafted in the first round by the Blue Jays, and you decided not to sign with them. You went to Kentucky, and the next year you got drafted in the fourth round, and you did sign. Why did you not go with the, the hometown team? Uh, we couldn't come to an agreement. You know, oh. I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was treated fairly, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't going to stand for that. So um, I made the decision to uh, to go a different route, and uh, you know it, it's worked out for me. I'm glad, uh, no regrets. I'm glad that I made the decisions that I did at that time, and it's uh, led me here to be at the Yankees. So it couldn't uh, couldn't have gone any better. James, that probably was disappointing for a kid from Canada that you couldn't come to an agreement. That probably was a dream come true to get drafted by them. 
Yeah, you know, at that time, it was uh, it was very exciting. Um, I just felt like I had to stand up for myself in mm-hmm. that uh, in that moment, and uh, it was just part of my principles and uh, how I'm how I expect to be treated. And uh, yeah, it was it was definitely an, uh, an interesting time. Now, James, you'll you'll get to know me. I'm very vindictive, so it must have been great for you to pitch a no hitter against the Blue Jays. Then, let's be honest. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, that, that was uh, couldn't have gone any better. You know, honestly, to have it be in Canada, share that with Canadian fans, and also have it be on TV across Canada, so all my friends and uh, and family in Vancouver could watch. Uh, it was pretty special. Now, growing up in the Vancouver area, was Seattle kind of the de facto local team for you, or did you still follow Montreal and Toronto when you're growing up? Um, I'd say I was more a Mariners fan. I didn't watch a whole lot of baseball when I was growing up. I was really? more outside pl- playing the game, you know. Um, I didn't I didn't watch a whole lot of uh, sports on TV. I was just too busy playing them myself. Um, but I think we would go down and watch some Mariners games every year, and I think that's what made me, you know, more of a Mariners fan growing up as a kid. Now, James, you know, this, this radio show is also simulcasted around the country on the Yes Network, and so they have a picture of you in a Yankee uniform where they superimpose the hat <laughs> and you have the, uh, your jersey on, but in the picture, you have a beard. Is that going to be a tough <laughs> thing for you to get rid of? No, it won't be a tough thing. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I'll be able to uh, shave and be uh, being clean shaven. I've heard that there is a... Uh you might, I might be allowed to have a mustache. Yes. i got to find out for sure. Yes, you know. can. It just can't but drop I, below the lip. Do you really want one? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I've, ro- I've rocked it before, and it's, uh, it's, it's okay. I, my wife likes it. <laughs> All right. Well, how quickly How quickly does, like, do they mention anything about that in the initial conversation? Like, hey, just so you know, you got to shave. Not yet. No, I haven't. We haven't had those conversations yet. I'm sure that... Uh, uh, Aaron Boone will uh, cover some of those things in our in our next conversation, just the expectations and, no. uh, you know, what uh, is required of me. Well, they will. That will definitely come up in conversation, too. Uh, yeah. You said you played a lot of sports up in Canada. Did you play hockey? I never did. Um, I was uh, I was a baseball guy um, pretty much from the start. My, my dad never played hockey uh, growing up other than, you know, pond hockey or, uh, you know, just recreational stuff, nothing, uh, no organized sport. And he was more of a baseball guy, so that's what he got me into. All right, so total curiosity, James. So you, you, every time I've announced games with you and the my, the, the uh, Mariner announcers, it's James Paxson. Very formal. Why not Jimmy? When did it become James? Uh, it's always been James. Uh, I've had some some friends uh, that have called me Jimmy in the past, but. Uh, you know, I've been called Pax, you know, or anything like that. But just not a lot of people have called me have called me Jimmy. But now a lot of people call you the Big Maple. Do you like the nickname? It works. Yeah, the <laughs> uh, the fans in uh, in Seattle uh, seem to like it. The uh, the media kind of ran with it. Uh, it wasn't something that I dubbed myself. That's for sure. It was uh, one of our coaches. I think uh, a couple of years ago uh, came up with that name, and uh, it stuck. I'll take us back to the no hitter. What was you just like to experience that? It was amazing. You know, it, I didn't really know that it was happening until probably the fifth inning. I was too focused on trying to uh, get myself right, you know, because early on I was walking a few guys and didn't even really feel that great. And then uh, it all just kind of clicked in the fifth inning and everything started feeling better. I looked up, there was no hits, and there were some amazing plays being made behind me as well. How about the and, 16 uh, strikeouts in, in seven innings? How about that game? Yeah, that was uh, that was a special game. It was one of those where I came out of the gates and I knew that I had a special fastball that day, and uh, they just could, they couldn't catch it. You know, no matter what I did, what what they did, they just could not catch up to it. I felt like I could just throw a fastball to the top of the zone, and I was going to put it by them every single time. You know, and I mixed in a few few cutters and curve bulbs, it was, but it was a it was a lot of fastballs, and uh, it was just explosive that day. They had no chance. Now you said you didn't watch a lot of. Uh sports because you were out there playing but w- was there a mentor was there somebody you tried to pattern yourself off of as you were growing up as a pitcher uh, my two favorite guys uh growing up were randy johnson and andy pettit um those those were my guys i really enjoyed watching randy's stuff you know man that explosive fastball on the slider and then andy pettit i just enjoyed watching everything about him how he carried himself how he competed it was just uh he was the best 
Now, uh, this previous season, the numbers were good. You threw 160 innings, but you probably gave up more home runs than you wanted to. What do you think uh, happened there, and how do you correct that? Because you're pitching in a ballpark now half your games that does yield home runs. Right, yeah. You know, I did uh, give up more home runs uh, last year than uh, in previous years. Um, I think leaving a few things at the top of the zone made a few, few more mistakes than I would have liked to. Um, got... Uh, I think a little distracted at times when I shouldn't have, and that's things that I'm, you know, working on uh, remedying for next year. And uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be ready to go. Do you have to make adjustments ballpark to ballpark? Like you said, the short porch at Yankee Stadium obviously doesn't affect you as much being a lefty. But are you conscious of the size of the ballparks, Fenway? You know, if you, if the occasional time you pitched in Philadelphia, the places that do give up a lot of home runs. Not really. You know, I'm going to go out there and do my thing. Um, I'm going to uh, do what I have to do. At certain times, there may be times where I'm going to pitch guys more away or more inside if uh, if they're looking to go that way. But that's more just kind of reading swings and knowing what guys are trying to do against me. What are we looking for number-wise with the Yankees? I'm looking to stay healthy, and uh, I'm looking to help the team uh, make the postseason and win a championship. You know, I... I uh, I can't promise any results, but I can promise you you're going to get everything I've got. Well, I actually, uh, because I'm a jerk, I actually meant the number on your back. What kind of number do you want? Because there's not a lot, a lot of numbers available. Yeah, no threes, no fives, no, no fours, sevens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's number 65 in, uh, in Seattle, and uh, I feel like that's a pretty rare number. Yeah. Uh, I think that might still be available. Yeah, Phil Hughes used it, and they have not retired it, so I think you, I think you can get it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> now, you Here went we to go. the University of Kentucky. Any interaction at all with Coach Cal? Uh, no, I never uh, never did have any interaction there. I heard, I have heard that he is a uh, Yankee guy, though, so yes. I'm sure I'll, I'll get a chance to meet him. Did you go to Rupp Arena a lot, or are you just locked in on the baseball part? I was pretty focused, locked in on the baseball part. Uh, tried to be uh, good in school, too, in my classes and stuff like that. I did make it to a few games, um, for sure. It was a great place to watch basketball, great uh, basketball mm -hmm. program there. Um, but uh, I wasn't a regular, that's for sure. He seems so committed to the art of baseball. As you said, you didn't watch a lot of games. You are out playing. So how does James Paxton, James Paxton just kind of relax? What are things you're into other than baseball? Uh, well, I'm married. Uh, hang, hang out with my wife. Spend lots of time with her. Um, I like fishing. I've uh, gone into that. I've done a few fishing trips uh, this off season. Um, that's kind of what I do to relax and, you know, like movies. Um, yeah, just uh, enjoying time with friends and family as well. Might be a good idea not to fish in the East River. That's probably our... Well, it depends on what you're fishing for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point, though. Very good point. So it sounds like you're excited. It sounds like you're pumped up. You're probably sick of answering all these questions. Yeah. But uh, we thank you for taking, taking some time. Look forward to meeting you and uh, hope you and your wife and your extended family have a happy Thanksgiving. And welcome to New York. You bet. Thanks for having me, guys. You happy Thanksgiving it. to you, too. All right, you thank too. you. That's James Paxson. The newest Yankee pitcher, 30 years old, and uh, he'll be wearing number 65 and uh, the Big Maple, part of the Big Apple.